Oh, what the hell? Well, this is our fifth day of hiking here, and you know, we've been together too long. You know, that's kind of how you do with family when they stay more than three days, you gotta kind of get sick, tired of them. Uh, you know, I care a lot about Larry, but I'm about sick of him. And, uh, but anyway, he just insulted me. I got the only, I was in a hurry and I had to get some uh, uh, good, you know, hiking shorts. And I said, well, how you like him hiking shorts? And uh, what'd you say? I had the girl color. Yeah, but you said something else about what he went with. He says these short shorts, they go with my girly beads. But um, how you feel this morning? You feel like you, you, you ready for it? Your back is limber, your legs are strong, your mind, well, let's don't get there. But you know, um, how do you feel, my friend? Uh, hey. <laughs> I feel today out. Yeah. Ready, ready for day out. Yeah. I, I got up this morning, and you know I've been so bragging. I want to brag on Dr. Russ MacArthur, Meridian, Mississippi. He's my chiropractor, and he teaches this all over the world. He goes on these uh, lectures and things because he has a, you know, a significant way that he that he uh, does that kind of work. And I've been going to him for 30 years almost, and uh, I just go for an adjustment, you know, and uh, so. I didn't do this on the first trip, which I should have. And on that first trip, my back was out and my neck was, was bad. And I want to tell you why I had a, have a kind of trouble with my neck. When I was 13, year, 13 years old, Johnny Hines, who was 11, and my brother, who was 13, Johnny Hines tried to teach uh, Johnny White how to drive. And we had this 1956 Ford truck and a... Uh, went down old church road and Johnny lost control of the truck. I mean, just been, you know, what are you, what's my word here? Not refurbished, but you know. With it, yeah, that's the word, man. Sometimes I can't find my words. I ought to run for president. But anyway, he took that dadgum truck off the church road, up a hill, and hit this big fence. Then he got the wise idea that he is going to <clears throat> steer that thing. I'm always saying, I don't have fast. He's going way too fast. And he comes out on the other side, loses control, and hits another fence that was not up on the hill. And he turned that truck over. Guess where I was? Where? I was in the bed of the truck. Man, I got thrown. Look, it was like Batman. Man, I went up at 13 years old. I went up in the air. And, you know, I don't exaggerate, but I probably went up probably went about 12 or 13 feet up in the air. And it, it, you know, I've been in these situations before and I don't know if it, it happens for you or any other of our listeners, but viewers. But um, when I'm in a, in a real dangerous kind of situation, everything slows down. Everything's in slow motion. Is that, has it ever happened to you? Can't say well, it's happened to me four or five times. And so I'm up in the air, you know, it's kind of like a movie, like you're on a trampoline, and, and all of a sudden I says, and this is all happening, you know, in a split second, but I I said, oh, I better put my head between my knees and start rolling when I hit the ground. And it's exactly what I did, Larry. And you know what I hit? I hit, I hit right in the, um, you know, right off a road in a ditch, and it was, you know, chert, but not only did it have chert, but it had prickly pears. Man, I was just started rolling because I didn't want that truck to fall on top of me. I don't know if you've noticed this or not. I'm a fast thinker. And what's that got to do with hiking? Well, I think I'm going to get around to that eventually. But anyway, I had prickly pears all over me, and I had to, had to take needle nose pliers, you know, and, and take them out and everything. And put bandages all, you know, Miss Willie May Hines wrapped me up, you know, and I don't go through the whole story because it's so traumatic. I might might start having, you know, nightmares again, things over. But anyway, do you know what happened 50 years later? 50, 50 years later, this is a true story. 50 years later, my twin brother calls me up and he says, oh, Jackie, I've been thinking about something today. I've never thought about it before. And I said, well, what's that? 
he goes, uh, or as Johnny Hines would say, he never called us Jackie or Johnny. He said, Jackie White, Johnny White, you know. So I said, well, what's that, Johnny White? And he says, you know, when I wrecked that truck and turned it over that time, where were you? Well, you know, I pulled, and now he doesn't want to remember this, but I actually pulled them out of that. I thought they were dead, you know. I pulled them out of that window. <laughs> you know, I got to say this. I looked down there in that through that window, and I looked at Johnny Hines, and his leg was over his neck. I thought he, his leg is is has been thrown away from his body. It took me two seconds to realize that was Johnny White's leg <laughs> over his neck. But they didn't have a scratch on him, man. But um, anywho, anyway, 50 years later, where were you when I turned over that truck? And I said, uh, well, I was about 13 feet in there, and uh, and I put my head down and rolled through the shirt and had prickly pears. Don't you remember them picking them prickly pears out of me with a needle nose pliers or anything? And he said, well, you could have been killed. I said, yeah, is that the first time you ever thought about it? And he said, well, yes, and he hung up the phone. <laughs> man, oh, man, what's that got to do with hiking? Huh? Don't forget. <laughs> I uh, where am I? Hey, where you have any idea about the trail today? Where it is and what's it gonna be like? This is a sh kind of a short hike, though, in a way. Yeah. But it sounds like it's got some stern parts. Does it sound that way to you? Yeah, the steep climb. Yeah, it. man, that's uh, golly, Bill. I ain't no goat. You know what I'm saying? Even though you look like one. Well, I know somebody who smells like one occasionally. Hey, you know, Larry, it's so considerate. <clears throat> you know, if you don't have this real, I'm talking about industrial strength, insect repellent on you, <clears throat> I mean, you ain't going to make it, are you? No. And we have to spray ourselves sometimes two or three times, and I had that big old can out there ready to spray that stuff all over me, and Larry says, oh, let's don't do that. Let's wait till we get out of, out of George's car because that might stink. And I said... Well, that's so considerate. And he says, uh, I've been noticing as he's putting that, that face mask on himself real quick when we get in the car. <laughs> Man, I ain't got anything else to share, but I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to be hiking. And I hope, dear God, please, that we are safe today, that we have a big time. Larry gets a better disposition because I'm telling you something, this has been five days. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs>